Good morning, chat. Oh, forgot to turn off the starting soon thing as a warning. <laughs> oh, damn it. I was like, I was so confident I would have the stream start up done perfectly today. Of course, I mess up the one thing I've never done before. Ah, well, what are you going to do? Venus Rose, 433. Thank you for the follow. One hour ago. You good, kid? Very few people on Twitch are... Well, actually, no. You could be in a different time zone. I was going to say, very few people on Twitch are up as early as I am, but... It don't matter if you're not here. Ah. <sighs> My, my throat is bothering me a little bit today, so I'm going to try and keep the voices going as long as I can. I think we can finish this case today, though. <coughs> Sorry. I genuinely think we can get this done today. I hope we can. Jeez, there's no telling now. Fuck. I've gone and ruined it for myself. All right, let's do this. Well, that's an awkward cut. Hold on a sec. Have my headphones on backwards once again? There we go. Now, what the hell are we doing? Let's see, we got the monkey. Oh, we got the murder note, that's right. We need to find someone who can give this to. Ugh, I don't want to talk to Mo. Oh, but Acro's room is open now. Whoa, hello. I forgot about you. You must be Phoenix Wright. Y yes? Pleased to meet you. I'm Ken Dingley. But here at the circus, everyone just calls me Acro. You good, dude? He, he looks a little bit dead inside. Mr. Acro! Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you'd definitely show up here. Acro, you're a member of this circus as well! That's right. I mainly performed on the tightrope with the flying trapeze. But nowadays, all I perform in is my wheelchair. Ooh, that's a bit tragic. Oh, not the freaking cursed music again. Oh my god, chat, I can't... Look at this. I cannot turn this stuff down any lower. Or it's just off. It's so loud. I already have the game dialogue down almost 10 decibels. Well. Guess that, we just have to deal with it. All right, Acro, what are you up to? Acro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at business. And then one night, they decided to run away from it all without me. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me. It was truly a lifesaver. It seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. Was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. And now, look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. It's such a shame. Sometimes I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. Hmm, I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina is so cute! She's truly a princess! Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Uh oh. Well, that's ominous as fuck. Um. Hmm. Do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? Um. I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheel? Maya, come on. You don't just ask that. The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk now? I can't even stand now. Since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. It looks like he's holding back tears. I, I kind of feel bad. That's awful! 
The accident happened during an acrobatic session, right? Um... Oh? Something to hide, Mr. Flying Trapeze Man? Doesn't seem like Acro's injuries were acrobatic in nature. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost since month, six months since I was hurt. <laughs> since months! I injured my legs during practice. <clears throat> six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus then? Wait, didn't we... Yeah, you haven't forgotten what happened six months ago. Someone was murdered. I stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah, you went there for rehabilitation? What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke to the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. I, I gotta say, I love these little bird models. Look at them. They're just cute. Little cocktail and whatever that one is. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. Hmm? What you saw. Jeez, that sounded really ominous. <coughs> yeah. This may have been a bad idea. What did you see, Acro? That night. I was in bed, sleeping, when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see! The scene of the crime was right below your window! That's when I looked out the window. What did you see? Ha 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 ha! He was flying straight up into the air. He? Maximilian Galactica. What? <laughs> Again with the eggs, Maya. How? Why? Where? I restocked before we came here. God damn it. That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Nick! Okay, what do you know about... Oh, what do you know about money? <laughs> money is a great friend to me. That pile of treasure over there is his collection, huh? Sarky Boo Boo, thank you for the follow. Always appreciate it. Oh my god, did that just put us at 80? God. Shit like that always catches me off guard. Thank you very much. It is indeed. Money will bring anything back with it. Aw, that's so cute. Yeah, I'm not great with the ladies, but I seem to be pretty popular with the animals. <laughs> He's got little bird friends. I appreciate it. I, I respect the hell out of it. God, I wish I could be friends with animals like that. I used to spend, like, the only times I would genuinely hang out outside as a kid was trying to pull off that Disney movie magic of, like, holding out my hand and a bird would fly to my finger. Never worked. Ugh, you. Go away. Um... Let's head to the big top. Whoop! Something changed. The Berry Big Circus Big Top. You're oh, not this again! I've got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, Nick! Wonderful. Today's special must be Phileo Phoenix. Stay! Stay! Heal! Ah, uh, she's back. The evil magical girl. Oh, my! Nick, it's you guys. I'm sorry. I guess I made a mistake. Wait, did you tell that line to attack us, you freak? A mistake? Yeah, a little one. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. But I was expecting more of a monkey than a hu- Wait, you were about to maul that fucking monkey? Like, I get that it's annoying, but what the hell? A monkey? What, money the monkey? Just to go back and clear something up, why'd you want to teach money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got something that means a lot to me. I keep forgetting the voice I gave her. She's like a wicked witch to us, or something like that. 
Something that means a lot to you. It must be something shiny, right? Um, actually, it's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should? When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Hey, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you saw that monkey, you'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important for me. Well, <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Illusion of free choice. What the fuck is this? Gladly, but of course, I'll get it for you. God damn it, Phoenix, you fucking simpleton. Leave it all up to us. Guess there's no turning that, turning down that quest. Yay, you're really gonna do it. <laughs> I might as well have told him to jump off a cliff. Fucking evil bitch. It's a pity about what happened to the ringmaster. Dad! Everyone loved him, didn't they? He must have been quite a man. He was. I love my dad so much. I hate to say it, but she doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. That's why I feel so lonely. I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? Is he going to come back from the dead? Maya, you are a spirit medium. Oh. Right. Yeah. When Leon died, I talked with my dad, and he told me that when someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. A star? That means my dad is looking down on me from the sky. Okay, that's actually kind of a wholesome concept, but... That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. That's kind of sweet, but I bet you there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? How did you know what I was saying? Don't forget, Phoenix. I'm part psychic. I will read your mind all day. Oh, God. Do you think that one day I'll be a star, too? Of course. You really... Okay, I need to... I need to stop. I need to stop. That voice is going to kill me. We are 15 minutes into a four-hour stream. You really think so? Yeah. You will. I think. I've got a feeling that everyone is doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's alright with Regina. Oh, I remember. We gotta do this. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what that is. R really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. It was in your pocket? This piece of paper was in your pocket. Hmm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time. Breakfast time? Yeah, I always take Acro his breakfast in the morning. That's when I also take out the trash in his room. And I go to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realize that the piece of paper was in your pocket? Yep, but since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged in someone else's pocket. And then what? I wondered if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did! I stuck it up there! How'd you know? Hmm... It was Regina who put it up there. When did this happen? Ah, uh, the morning of the murder, I think. That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this? Okay, so Regina found it in her pocket and then put it on the bulletin board after she took Ac Acro his lunch. Or breakfast. So all of a sudden, the acrobat's looking a little bit sketch. Let's see. Ugh, stop the music, please. It's driving me insane. Something smells fantastic, so we know it can't be Mo. Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers. Oh, God. He's back. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Bistro to Suck, a.k.a. the Cafeteria. Mmm, it smells so good in here. Those burgers look great. She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. <laughs> My burgers are the best. Toothy meat, toasted buns, special thoughts. They are absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you with the hamburger heaven. 
because I put poison in them. I bet. I can tell by the smell. Oh, I'm getting hungry too. These burgers must have some kind of special power. More like a special powder. <laughs> Nearly invisible to the naked eye and tasteless. You won't even know what hit you. Alright, funny man. Now that the ringmaster is gone, what are you going to do? That's all I've thought about in the past two days. Everyone loved Ruffle. You've heard that crow story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He's calmed down a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Akro was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yes, he was. Anyways, I give it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. I've been thinking of trying on the ringmaster's shoes. As long as you take off that makeup and quit with the shit jokes. Please. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? He may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. A lot of what he says is right. No. Oh. All that's left is to see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know. The tragedy? You know? What is he talking about? Get over what tragedy, you know? Oh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. He must mean the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. <laughs> I know nothing about nobody. Dang, 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 correct the moon, though. Doesn't he mean ding? No, I mean no disrespect here, but are you lying to us? Uh, no, not at all. What makes you think that? Just the way you said everyone can get over the tragedy seemed a bit strange. Sounded like you were talking about something from a long time ago. <laughs> He's slowly devolving into a monster. Mo! I'm right, aren't I? Uh-oh. This again. Okay, two. That's not that bad. So now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. Give me a break. Us old men have accidents. I wore big pants for a reason. Nope. Nope. You don't deserve a laugh for that one. Six months ago, eh? Hmm. I I think there's a bit more we need to find. Before we can, like, start breaking stuff apart. I know we have to do Mo first. Don't take that out of context. Max! He must have taken Max in for questioning again. There really isn't anything that we need to ask him right now, anyway. You're right, I guess. Alright, let's go then. Hmm. Oh, this is so much better. Yeah. The music here doesn't grind on my soul like the rest of the music in the fucking circus does. Uh. And it's over. Okay. Do you know anything else? Tell us more about money. He just loves to cause nothing but trouble, that cute little monkey. I wonder how cute he'll look stuffed and set up on a shelf. Whoa, Regina! Oops, was that out loud? Don't you think using a tiger to scare him is a bit much? Huh? Why is that? Do you really have to ask that? It's dangerous to use a tiger for that kind of thing. It's not dangerous at all. Regina's just a little kitten. I've seen plenty of kittens, and that's no kitten. Okay. What do you think about Acro? He's 26. Ken Dingling seriously injured both legs while training six months ago. Ah, oh, it's Acro. Is he in his room today? Yes, he is. We just came back from meeting with him. I hope his legs get better soon. Acro's so incredible, especially on the trapeze. The trapeze is that enormous swing hanging from the top of the tent, right? Yep, that's it. I really want to see him up there again. Acro the Acrobat. That's strange. Acro doesn't seem to have very many nice things to say about Regina. But Regina seems to like Acro just fine. She's a little bit wonky like that. Uh, did I actually talk to these two? What do you know about this murder threat? 
like nothing. Max G's bus. Right, the bus joke. Uh, thinking. Maybe we can talk to Acro about some stuff? this? That's what we want to know. It was posted in the cafeteria the morning before the murder! In the cafeteria? What happened? He suddenly looks incredibly serious. It's got something to do with her, then you should go straight to the source. Her? Regina. Ask her about it. Oh, okay, I guess that was our hint to get more info. Okay. What if I present this to Mo? What the? Wait, something changed. Hmm, Mo's not here. What's that? I hear something. S Stop it, Nick! You're scaring me! Oh, there's the bitch! Nick, it's money! That monkey's holding something. That's it! That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? Alright, time to take on this monkey attorney style. Give it back, monkey brain. Stay... Scratch, scratch. <laughs> yep, Phoenix would absolutely do this. Why is the courtroom music playing? You know what? I'll take it. It's better than the circus music. Yeah! Okay. Yikes! Jesus, Phoenix, what did you say to him? I tried to have a monkey-to-monkey -monkey talk with him. I really did. Nick, you, you... I swept it while money was distracted. Wow, you're really on the ball today, Nick. Let me see it, let me see it. Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. <laughs> Phoenix! Hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh well. This is time for you to lay off the burgers. Not to mention it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. Yeah, it does look kind of ridiculous. Okay. She should be in the tent. Stop the music! Please! I, I'm almost tempted to turn it off entirely. There's your vest, you psycho. Here you go, Regina! Yay, thank you. You really got it back from me. Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney. Okay, kid, back off. It's nothing. No wonder guys not to mush in front of this girl. Phoenix, she's 16. Cut it out. Dude, no, stop. Freaking bad, bad Phoenix. Hey, Regina. That costume is yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. Huh? This costume, this isn't mine. It was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that someone killed. Tell us more about your pet lion. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's a very good picture of a lion. That looks wonderful. That's right. My dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down and then he opened his mouth. You know. Ah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> if that had been done with Maya's, like, double nod animation, that would have been perfect. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? Another egg generated from the ether. I sure did. People in the crowd always loved seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. You sure they were screaming because they loved seeing you do that? Anyways, what was the bad thing? Oh yeah, Leon bit someone during that practice. Regina! Everything was alright though, right? No, it wasn't alright. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Would you like to be a star? 
This girl is absolutely insane. Poor thing. Shot by the ringmaster six, six months ago for biting a performer. Wait, so who did he bite? What about this? Can you tell me? Um, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Huh. Okay. Let's think. We have this now, so there's gotta be someone we can show it to. Oh, I think I know. Wait, no. Into the big top. And I think now we can, like, challenge Mo. Got you on the ropes, funny man. Get over it. What do you mean, Mo? Please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at this circus? Okay, okay, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there, some juicy burgers. Let's eat instead. Fortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. What the fuck? <laughs> Well, no, actually, chicken is fucking amazing. Love chicken. Oh! Actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident? This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would it? Oh, I didn't realize I had so little gauge left. Uh-oh. I heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during a practice, right? How did you... Oh, uh-oh. You've broken one of my locks. One of the limiters for my power. <laughs> Phoenix Wright, do you understand what you are about to unleash upon this world? I can only control it for so long. Shit jokes, keep it at bay. <laughs> I told them so many times, you shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her head inside Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that the ringmaster went along. He never could say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo, don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? Well, um, I promised I wouldn't say anything. You promised? He's involved in this, too. He's involved, huh? Mo must be talking about... Mo, is this the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything? Only one person who might have a stake. It must have been Acro, right? How? How did you know? Phoenix Wright, if you unleash that final limiter, the destruction on this world will be unlike anything you've ever seen. Don't you do it! Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the Ringmaster. I don't care how much you value the truth. You would stake all of humanity's life on this. No. No way. I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, kids. It looks like the entire world's about to go kaspooey. Let's start. <laughs> is that why his hair is that color? He's been like Super Saiyan this entire time. <laughs> Just start screaming. <laughs> it's just like you said. You know, the accident. Did someone die? No, but it would have probably been better if they had. Oh god. What? How would that have been better? He's still alive. When he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from a coma that he's in. Coma? All he does now is lie in his bed at the hospital. And that's all he's ever going to be able to do. I... I see. How is he related to Acro? He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was Acro's brother. Brother? They were an Acrobat team of brothers. Acro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Anyway, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Ah. 
Um, who is Acro's younger brother? Sean Dingling. Everyone always called him that. He fell in love with Virginia. Wait, hold on. Okay, every time someone falls in love with this chick, it turns out disgusting. Trying to win her love with his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina and end up in jail. Six months ago, while we were practicing, all of a sudden, Black Blood's out, let me perform with Leon. Why'd he do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. Uh-oh. I'll never forget that moment. It's so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. Crunch. Ugh, that is a grisly picture. Even if they don't show it. Thumb thick grin. It, is it bad that I'm still keeping up the clown voice for something so serious? <laughs> ah, fuck it, we come this far. No way! That's impossible! A smirking lion, a flying murderer. Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all these incredible events? I'm somewhat senile. Nick, can lions smile? Um, we never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in the mood for a burger. Here, you do have some pepper. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Ah! Huh? Huh? Achoo! Egg shoots out, splatters on the wall. Achoo! Oh god, she's gone rapid fire. Knife! What a wonderful sneeze! Huh? You think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana peel. That's basic clownsmanship. Girlie, I know you gotta understand that. Nick, I think I'd make a good clown. You have no idea, kid. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. <laughs> does Regina sneeze with Pepper too? She does? That was always teasing with Pepper. That? From my point of view, those two always look so perfect together. Jail. Jail. He got what he deserved. I was worried, because for a second I thought they were twins. This still isn't good enough, though. They look perfect together, huh? Alright. Time to confront the man who's overwhelmed by tragedy. I'm actually excited for the next case we do manage to finish this one today. Because it's going to be a lot of characters returning and a lot of fun voices. I, I hope that's not too spoilery. I'm just, I'm just excited. There we go. Ah, Mr. Wright. Back again, I see. Well, he did say, I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? Am I thinking of the movie, Phoenix? Maya, shut up. We don't have the money to reference that. We're back because Akra's hiding why his legs were injured. Oh, I think that means we have everything we need to unravel this. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It seemed that he knows that we know. Oh well, you two got things you want to talk about, so fire away. Okay, just gonna quickly save, because I would much rather start the next port segment with full bar. Say he can murder with the greatest of ease, the paralyzed man on the flying trapeze. About the wheelchair. I have to ask you, how are you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes. Unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it secret. Acro, are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? The lion! Leon, six months ago you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. 
I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked by a lion. That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So let me rephrase that as battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight to save someone. That. It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. I, I feel kind of like a piece of shit for bringing this up. Mo, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about that from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. A slip of the tongue? Anyways, they were an incredible team. Cut down together in their prime. Oh. Cut down together. That was where he slipped. And that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident. Together like always. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. I still haven't broken Acro's last psych lock. This must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. You care to explain more? Acro, I know you are still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive. Yep. This little murdering shit. Regina. You always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she's cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know... Her, tri her tiger tried to attack me. Agent tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? No, oh, maybe I overdid it again. If I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Don't... Oh my god, Phoenix, you fucking idiot. Don't give him the only piece of evidence we have incriminating him. God damn it, I have to, don't I? Phoenix, you fucking moron. This. Where'd you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Mm-hmm. I always take Acro's breakfast in the morning. Gotcha, bitch! You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. You know, I don't, I don't understand why you felt the need to, like, cut out magazine slips if you're just gonna hand it to her. Like, dude... That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. Gotcha! Oh, good morning! Hello! Hi! I hope you have a good day, too. Thanks for dropping in. Always appreciate it. My legs were injured by Leon. Six months ago. My younger brother, Bat, had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. Still gross. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid, too. But that line was very old to begin with. An age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, in this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened. He just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor Pat! When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up... What about Pat? 
He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. That and Regina. They were such great friends. Oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. You held onto this? Ugh. Covered in blood. Gross. It's covered in blood. Yes, my I just said this. <laughs> this scarf. It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. When he did, he looked like he was smiling. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! Mo said the same thing. When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know. Mo said the same thing. What do you think it all means? Uh-oh. Oh, no. God damn it, Franny. I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. Miss Von Karma? I've already heard everything, so hand over the, the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial. That is for me to decide. Bitch says who? I think we should begin our preparations now, Akro. Preparations? I've served a summons to Akro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Akro, we'll talk more at the prosecutor's office. Akro, a witness? Come, Akro, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. Uh-oh. Now what do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you all full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. Okay, am I nuts? Can't an attorney, a defense attorney, also submit evidence? Man, Phoenix Wright really does love to freaking twist what is allowed and what isn't, whenever it wants. Alright, on with the shit show. I think this is the final day of the case, thank god. December 30th, 9.41am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 5. Good morning, Max. Oh, yeah. Good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. <laughs> don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Uh, why'd you bring an entire carton? How long has that been out of the fridge? Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie, my sweetie pie princess. Jail. Back to jail. You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? So what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess. You'll fly at the end? Uh, it's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today, I'm just a member of the audience. Fabulous! Enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. Fuck it. Nut job. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? And this is coming from the girl who launches eggs like they're ammunition. Top of the morning, dude. Oh, Mo. Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo! How low can you go? <laughs> That's oddly appropriate for most court cases. M mo Top of the morning to you, governor! Uh, top of the morning? That's the ticket! Attack of the day starts with energy in the morning. The only bird gets the worm, but then again, worms lack higher brain function. <laughs> hey, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk! Keep drinking, pretty boy! <laughs> oh my, thanks! So how are you today, right? Well, got the feeling today I'm going to face off against the real culprit. 
You mean that crow? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line. Literally. He's got guts to spare. All I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is. I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. Oh, not this bullshit again. What are you going to do then, Nick? Perhaps have an egg? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Today we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Akron to the truth. God damn it. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyway, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes. That's why I brought her here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. She needs to wake the fuck up. Alright, give me a chance to save real quick. Ah, uh, hey! It's everyone's favorite life stealer! Court is now in se- Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica! I am so old! I'm not taking you from anyone, I swear! The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well, Ms. Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. Do you have youth left? Do you? Do any to spare? Spare youth, Miss! Spare youth for the old! <laughs> the prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness. What should I say? A new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. We're really still pushing this fucking angle. I'm gonna get spit all over my screen doing that. Order! Order! I had a feeling something like this would come up. Only people who can fly are wizards who are capable of stealing the youth of others. Not that I know anything about that. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene, on my orders. Ah, oh, poor gumshoe. <laughs> Listen, pal, if I don't do what she says, I'm never gonna be able to take someone's brain again. I can't live like that, pal. I gotta do what she says. Poor gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work. Shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. Okay. Now, they said we're not supposed to press. Are we actually not allowed, or is this just the game being dumb? There he is. Him with his birds. <gasps> Aww. Name with occupation. Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the very big circus. Where were you on the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. It was the night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. He just looks so tired. It was just after 10... Oh, uh, wait, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, she drilled that so hard into my head, I forgot what my actual voice is. It was just after 10 p.m., and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Kind of like that sound effect that just played for no real reason. Then, a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm, this witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. I don't think I like that. 
If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the skies that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. Like that clown! A man must know the, top, the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix, right? Just like your old friend, Mr. Myers Edgeworth, did. Okay, you bitch, that's a bit low. Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? <laughs> There's no way that actually happened. Fuck you, Phoenix Wright! How dare you mimic my accent! Very well, you may proceed with your cross-examination. What I witnessed. Okay, so, really quick. Just in case, because I don't know if the game was being serious about that. Aren't we allowed to press? You said that you were resting in bed. One would thus assume that you turned the lights off in your room, correct? That's correct. There are safety lights around the outside of the lodging house. It's so bright sometimes it can make it hard to sleep. If that's the case, wouldn't it be a good idea to close the curtains? I mean, judge. Look at him. Oh, wait! Oh, he has an egg in his mouth! Oh no, he's connected to Maya! <laughs> Why do they do that? It's so weird. I never really thought of that. I guess that means I'm off to buy some curtains. Ah, ah, sometimes I do make myself useful in these chambers. You know, as the judge, I don't do much often. Ow! The witness will proceed with his testimony. Okay, so we can press. Don't worry, chat. The game just specifically told us not to do that. Got it, of course. Fuck this case. The room is on the third floor, right? Yes. And you said that you were resting in bed. That is correct. But you were still able to hear a sound from outside. I was indeed. Pressing acro doesn't seem to get results. Hmm, maybe something was contradictory in what he said just now. Is there a contradiction? There's a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Mm, she's right. Let's see some evidence. Uh-oh. Ah. Uh... <laughs> um, what did he even say? <laughs> Whoops. No idea. This? What in the world is this? Ow! You just don't get it, do you, Mr. Phoenix Wright? What don't I get? You're not going to be able to get through this one with your usual bluff routine. Your client looks to be ready to take off once again. Straight towards a guilty verdict. You are bluffing? I will not forgive any more mockeries made in this court. Whoops. The witness, would you mind repeating your testimony? Oh, it doesn't even punish me either. Wow. That's some bullshit. That, so it literally told me not to press for no reason whatsoever. Are you sure it was a human being? Could have been a mannequin, perhaps a large action figure. Phoenix. I mean, you know what? That is feasible in an Ace Attorney case, but also... Hmm. Well, setting aside the possibility of a mannequin, an action figure is plausible. You have no need to mince words with Mr. Phoenix Wright. Testify to the truth and only the truth. Just as if we were there with you that night. I believe it was a human. Hmm. Damn. I just strengthened his testimony. <laughs> I wonder if Acro's statement jives with the facts. Okay, so we have to find the one that has a contradiction. Nope, damn it. I missed Chose. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. My badge. Same dialogue as before. So, there's literally no punishment. We saw him from behind, but that's what it looked like. Give us more details. The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed, after all. So, with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? 
The safety light lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? And I clearly saw the silk hat as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Maybe there's something fishy with his latest bit of testimony? Hmm. I, I remember what is wrong with this case and the stupidity of this idea, but I don't know where it comes in. What's the matter, Mr. Wright? N nothing, Your Honor. I just looked like a character from Astro Boy for a minute. <laughs> Until I can find a clear contradiction, I'd better not overdo it. I saw that, I thought it was true. Tell me a bit more on that. When did you start thinking that what you saw wasn't true? That's not important. I believe that the prosecution has done a bit of maintenance on the witness's test witness's memory. Just to make sure, let's ask the witness. Ow! Objection! S sustained! Don't sustain that. Akron must be lying about what he saw, right? Of course he is. Now the challenge will be to expose his lies in court. Well, put the pedal to the metal, Nick! Okay. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise. I saw someone flying. Okay. Oh, wait! We have the hat! If he had the hat on, then why was it left at the scene of the crime? I'm convinced the person I saw was Max Galactica. Yep. There's a huge contradiction with the witness uh, testimony, proof with evidence, same thing. Yes, I do. Aha! You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That... That's the Ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how much you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. How did he make that mistake? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? This judge puts me through so much pain. No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. A form of perjury that should immediately render your testimony worthless. Yet here we are, continuing anyways. Order! Order! As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth, and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What causes witness to commit perjury in this court today? Oh boy. All right, we're just straight up accusing him at the gate. Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion, a accuses Acro? You accuse the witness literally every time you're in court. What makes this one so special, huh? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. For now you play quite the clown, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You seem to have learned how to try and grab at an audience's hearts and minds, says the woman who just beat the judge to agree with her. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to vaz the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. R really? Hmm. You know, you seem to have quite a bit of youth. I could very easily steal that. Alright, I'm on your side now. Don't even fucking try it, old man. Ah! 
If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. He has an adorable pet bird. He cannot possibly be guilty. He's calm enough for it to be almost scary. <laughs> Fucking... Doink, doink. Hello? Any brains in there? Hmm, he is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Tingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? I'll just take the guilty verdict and go home. What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. That's true! I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a, of a murder of all things... See? Even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation, accusation is ludicrous! She's right! Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man! Hey, I wasn't gonna say it. Phoenix is a poopy head! Who brought a child to a murder case? That's <laughs> just, that's just some grown man in the back. That's gumshoe! <laughs> oh, excuse me. See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? If you're trying to draw more support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Ah, uh, this isn't a show, you psychopath. I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Acro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well. I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? Uh, the monkey, maybe? But I think it's he didn't. I think that's where we have to go with this. Of course he didn't. Now, since this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. <laughs> what? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro planned and committed this murder all by himself. Order! Order! What the... What are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm going to have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. As a defense attorney. <laughs> All right, then let's do it. Mr. Felix Wright, if this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm, Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Tingling? He was here, outside the house. There's no way he was anywhere but exactly right here. In the plaza, he was at the scene of the crime itself. Oh no, wait, he said acro. Fuck, I'm an idiot. Ow! Miss Von Karma, stop it! I've had enough of this shit! Give me that! <laughs> Just snags the whip from her. You'll be quiet and refrain from striking people. As if witness could not have possibly left the lodging house on his own. Not to mention what Mr. Phoenix Wright just said. There was no accomplice, remember? Yeah, um, you're right. I think I can get another chance. Wait, just one minute. There we go. Don't forget about my proverbial whip as well. Ah. Okay, I, I misread that. I saw Mr. Dingling, and I assumed that it was Mr. Barry. He was obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room? Pretty simple, huh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can be only one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? Okay, I'm actually gonna take advantage of the silence here to pause really quick. I will be right back, chat. Promise.
don't mind me just casually walking into my own door by accident. No idea how I managed that. <laughs> I'll do my best to make sure that's the only interruption in this stream, but I need to drink a lot of water to keep these voices going. Actually, I haven't had a single sip this entire time. Should probably do something about that. Bear with me. Alright, we're back. It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you propose is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there's no way he could go to the scene, of the cr to the scene or be the killer. Hmm, you've got a point. My entire theory is pointless and makes no sense. What about it? It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I'm very annoying when I want to be. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? Everyone keeps saying they saw the freaking symbols. But my, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. That I might be a killer. This guy's like the most agreeable witness we've ever had. However, how do you think I, that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm, how did he do it? That's the next course to this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here... She's right. I can't mess up here. I gotta give this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Acro killed the Ringmaster, and he did it while he was in his room. No doubt about it. Time to enlighten. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. Uh... I think I know how to do it. I'm going to present some evidence. Thank you for telling us that, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Which I can't actually freaking follow up. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is it. Take that. There we go. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? That is a fabulous bust. <laughs> so fucking stupid. It's quite a large bust. Stop! Stop it. Because it is life size, it is also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death, especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! See? This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica... Ma Maximilian Galactica... Fuck! Maximilian Galactica's ample bus. How did I go through that two times and not read the last line? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, this fucking game. Order! Order! So you're saying the bust fell onto the ringmaster. That lucky bastard. <laughs> a rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly be in a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. Well, Acro is an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bus. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? I confess, Your Honor. Well... Acro's at a loss for words! He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. You can't run away from things this- Ah! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright! What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? What is that, exactly? Is it someone lying on the witness stand for, like, half an hour straight? But well, that's all it really seems to be here. Von Karma. 
She's just using this testimony as a rouse to stall for time. There's absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled, because fuck him. It's funny. Why can't he see things my way once in a while? Phoenix, the fact that you're still allowed in court is kind of his way of letting you... <laughs> of seeing things your way. Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. How young are you, sir? <laughs> young enough to drain the life of, perhaps, to, just in theory. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems, however. Let's all be respectful towards him. You know, like, no beating him senseless with a whip. Thank you. Ah, that woman will sink to any low to win the, to win a case. Like treating people who are disabled properly. Ah, oh, how dare she? Phoenix, you fucking asshole. <laughs> I love you, dude. And yes, this guy is a murderer, but fuck it, hell. <laughs> I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I had a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. It makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him. Don't you think? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I, I just realized that my mouse has been hovering over the end stream button this entire time. Holy shit. If I move the wrong way... Oh, God. <laughs> Hmm. I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. I mean, who the fuck stalls in the Ace Attorney game? Wait a minute. Let me double check something here. I have... Ah! Ha ha ha! I get it. Here we go. Hmm. I suppose it's something the size of the bust. Okay, let's press here. This is the important one. I know it is. Why do you say it would be impossible? Phoenix, are you fucking blind? Allow me to explain. I am in a wheelchair. My legs do not work. Did you get it this time? You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see out below the window. Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick! Huh? What if you turn things around? It'd be if you think of it sort of like this. If you knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then you could drop the bust. Yeah, no shit, Maya. <laughs> that does make sense. Only I could prove somehow. An Akron knew the location of the ringmaster's head without looking down. Okay, I think I know what it is. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. There you go. Let me, let me just double check this to make sure I've got it right. If you haven't forgotten what happened six months ago, I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10 p.m. tonight at the Logic House Plaza. And then... This was inside the box. So the box would have had to be there. I think this is it. Yeah! Okay. Acro. You didn't really need to lean out of the window, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection! You're silly hinting at things that's pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just come out and fucking say it. Enough stalling. How about you show us some evidence? But, but I did such a good job at hinting. Yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. Key point here is the wooden box. Same wooden. Oh, the same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over? Yep, still old. Yep, totally old. Couldn't help but notice that someone brought their kids to this, so hey, I figured 
free youth? No one will fucking notice. They're kids. They change age all the time. I mean, you can say that about the same. You can say that just about for anybody, but it's even more so with kids. Shut up. Moving on. The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. That's true. Which means... This wooden box is already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. How did we not fucking notice this until now? Wait a minute. What is a box just doing out in the snow? The moment that the bus came falling down, it was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You, you mean... If the bus would have fallen upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that could miss the head of the victim. N no! Castle Phoenix Knight! Order! 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 This is unbelievable! Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. There's only one way to go from here forward. The next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow. Allow me to whip some sense into you. Mr. Phoenix Wright! Ow, 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 ow! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so specially made. S specially made? Indeed! Oh, the agony! had the most peculiar feature. Yeah, it was ridiculously huge and heavy. For something that just carried condiments. The box has remarkable weight. Wait? Yes, wait, while I explain what's going on. <laughs> According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required. Oh, I see. I would have to squat down, then lift it up with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means... That no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Food! Yeah, sure, Franny. You keep trying to convince yourself that. Does he even bother to listen to me anymore? <laughs> I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Y you! Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Answer me, young man! Mr. Wright may have a vi vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Uh... Inside of his shirt. <laughs> oh, fuck me. I remember. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm, and what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I cannot possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Ah, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that! Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice! <sighs> Franny, I'm gonna slap that mole right off your face. Ah! Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yeah, we definitely have a problem here. I know how. This is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. All right, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. Pencils down, Phoenix Wright. How did the witness get the bus from the cafeteria back to his room? Come on. A monkey. Somehow. We actually haven't seen how big this monkey is, so I don't know how, whether it could have hauled that thing around, but I think so. A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. I guess, yeah, he did haul a tuba up there, didn't he? <laughs> so, I don't think a statue like this would be that far out of question. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist ring. 
whipsaw? Are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and then brought it back home. Hmm? Oh. Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? Why am I so astonished by this? Objection! But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. But the cards... Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. Oh, shit! Phoenix, you are now asking to be hit with that fucking thing. Aye, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, they're made of platinum, which is very shiny. Gah! Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bust back to your room. And even then, it didn't necessarily have to be the bust. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Thank you for being honest, at least. Order! Order! I said order! Miss Von Karma! Where is the bus in question at this moment? Um, um, uh, I, um, I, I don't know, Your Honor. I, I, don't, I don't speak your language very well. Uh, <laughs> plays the foreigner card. Uh, the, I have to go. My home country needs me. They're searching for it as we speak. Hmm, this is a rather strange turn of events. Let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. You mean this bust was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Acro saw Bunny's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Acro was the murderer. Moron! Mr. Wright's argument was so circular that I'm still a bit dizzy. What the hell does that mean? How is an argument circular? How? What? Maybe it's just like a lack of... Just a poor translation bit. Oh, it's going around in circles. Okay, that, that makes much more sense. His argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't seem so flamboozled. Especially by this fraud of an attorney. That's right, I'm using words like flamboozled now. Shit is getting real. Fraud? You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ah! There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony, except for the fact that he changed it like every seven seconds. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Go get her, Phoenix. Tell her what you have to say. Go on. I got your back, kid. Go on. Phoenix? Oh, shit. Nick, don't let her beat you now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Mr. Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. It's so this and only this, Mr. Felix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? Yep. It is exactly this stupid. Here you go, Fanny. Franny? Not Fanny. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. He saw Max's b- Ow! I asked who was the murder other person most saw on this scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frere. Wait, doesn't that mean brother? Ah, uh, my French is way too rusty. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Uh-oh. Acro has discovered the truth. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. Yep, it is exactly this fucking ridiculous. How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw was wearing a clock. He was wearing a clock. <laughs> There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bus. It would be easy to hang one off of the cards in the bus's hands. Idiot! Who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bust? Doesn't matter who put it on the bust. 
Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? That question is of the utmost importance to this case. Don't you agree? Don't peek on me. <laughs> yeah. Good job trying to BS your way through, Phoenix, but it's not going to work. Well, let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The stupidest fucking case in the entire series all comes to this. Fool. Him? You're saying that it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. He, I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust. Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. And what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself! <laughs> she's, a, she's about to fucking lose it. That's a very nice diamond you have there in your bow. Where'd you get that? Weird. Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's step back in time. 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 Acro used a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. And he attached that rope to the bust. And dangled the bust out of his bedroom window, directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room. And once the scene, of course at the time the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Have we... have we made that clear yet? Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. Just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trilo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. Uh-huh. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim. Well, don't mind me, just gonna move over here for no fucking reason. You'll wait just a second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Ms. Von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. What? Mm-hmm. Just magically hovered over to the bust. The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. The impact also caused the sound of certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Acro naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Max, that Mo saw the bust being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bust up. Up, up, and away! Fuck this case. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. <laughs> so you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Acro! It could only have been you! Look at how much I care, Mr. Wright. Acro's been playing mind games with all of us! He sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Evidence? The fuck is that? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence, and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. That thing might sing, but you ever been hit in the head by a wooden hammer? Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? We have a mountain of evidence. Nick, they say they want evidence. We have witness testimony that confirms our entire theory. We have the monk... the fucking monkey. We have the hat on the ground. That's about it, to be totally honest. 
I just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. There's still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. Unusual? Contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of this jam. That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs up your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. What the fuck does that mean? Uh... <laughs> You're gonna have to be a bit more specific than that, Judge. Hard proof that you have unraveled the trick. Hard as a wooden box, maybe? <laughs> I don't fucking know. Uh... Okay, we haven't covered the topic of motive. So... Fuck. Uh, is it this? It's one of the, it's like the most relevant thing we have that hasn't been presented yet. Surely they don't want me to show them the bust again. That'd be fucking ridiculous. No. I was wondering why we still have this photo. Um Is it the hat? Because the hat's on the ground? I, I don't fucking know. You pull magic tricks out of a hat, I guess. Is that the fucking pun they're trying to line up? Ugh. God, fuck this case. Um... The fact that there's no... footprints? Fuck me. Problem is Max's three symbols. Okay, so I was right. Jeez. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses was the other. The theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Moe said yesterday. He testified that the criminal who he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Moe saw was actually the bus. Makes sense if you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat. Well, sort of. Fine, you've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in the court. He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like, I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course. I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. If the cloak snagged onto the bust, what happened to the white roses? also be there. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bus, it means the white roses would end up on the back of the bus. Ah! Which explains when Mo didn't see them. That makes literally no sense. The, the visual we've seen has only shown that from the back. What do you mean? <laughs> Okay. Sure. I guess. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bus, but then he would have been able to see the bus face, wouldn't he? Or, I don't know, maybe seeing that it was a fucking statue? That makes not a lick of sense. Order! Order! Just disintegrates in the dust. This is quite the shocking state of affairs. I've never seen such a stupid case in all my life. 
Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. Probably because it doesn't make any fucking sense. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Basically, this case in a nutshell. Just fucking go with it. God damn it. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Karma will finally throw in the towel. Uh-oh. Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. They're gonna call him a poopy head again? Hmm. Your Honor, I would like you to hear Akros' story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that, de that Akro deeply respected the ringmaster. Akro's motive. Hmm. Yep. <sighs> Seems this, this case isn't over yet, somehow. We're two hours deep. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten minute recess. Go on, you crazy kids. Monkey bars are open. Uh -huh. Alright. We're down a bit of energy, but it's fine. Got one whole hour of that, and we're still not done! December 30th, 2.17 p.m. In canon, this has been, like, since 9, so five fucking hours! Jeez! I can't believe it! Acro? It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is! And I think he was always the most straightforward of the group! Chavis, am I that hated? <clears throat> Akko tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? You're not, which is kind of the reason why. <clears throat> hey, hey, pal. You're gonna ignore me? Yeah! <laughs> oh, thank God. Finally, some release from this case. You're gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Ah, Detective Gumshoe! Ah, oh, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, Detective. I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? We got some really tasty milk! How about a card trick, Detective? Oh, uh -huh. well, if you insist. Now, about that evidence you mentioned. What is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yup, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Won't Miss Montcarma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret, pal. I was never even here. It just slowly fades out of existence. Whoa! Huh? Look, details are on a need to know basis. We're not really allies or anything. Everything that's happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. I don't know. This one karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. We'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday, our final plans were set into motion. Final plans? Soon we shall rule the world. But since it's von Karma doing the ruling and not me, I'm banking on you to end this mess, kid. Uh-huh. That reminds me. I'm gonna message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. That's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. Fades out of existence. Just like that. What did he mean by that? The very end part? I'm not sure. It was all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ah! Don't scare me like that. It looks like there's a large care packet from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. The reception area looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. Glug glug, bitch. An entire dairy's worth of milk for me? Who the sent it, though? 
December 30th, 227 p.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Oh, it actually was a 10-minute recess. I mean, it makes sense, but... Court is now back in session. Miss Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have, ha would have to commit this crime. Understood. Now, Mr. Dingling. I, I just realized I've been slightly sticking in Gumshoe's accent with the judge. I kind of like it, but it, it feels wrong. I'm, I'm going to stop doing that now. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, we get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cartoon gulp sound effect dot mp3. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the ringmaster of the very big circus, Russell Berry, took us in. I became an acrobat at around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm, you're such a thoughtful young man. As you've heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think that Acro would kill the man he held in such high esteem. You are absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? What the fuck? Just why there's no real need for a cross-examination, is there? Is there? Phoenix Wright, don't you fucking dare say yes! Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the Ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. Of course I'll cross-examine. you kidding me? The defense has a right to cross-examine the witness. Hmph. <laughs> You're so tactless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You don't care about justice, do you? You just want to fabricate a motive. Very well, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness. This is the only part of the case that I think is genuinely well-written. Round nine. Um, where's the point that I press on this? How do you describe your relationship with the Ringmaster? It's like an uncle, a father, and a big brother all rolled up into one. The Ringmaster and my brother were the only family I had. Hmm, what about other people at the circus? This was over 15 years ago. Back then, there were very few customers coming in, so no one really had the time to look after us. They were worried about other things. But the Ringmaster, he would always come see us with a laugh and a smile. What a beautiful story. That's why I was always thinking of what I could do to help. I wanted to thank him. Nick, isn't Acro such a wonderful person? How could we possibly accuse him, you fucking monster? I know. He seems like a nice guy, which is what makes this so difficult. And how long have you been a performer? I became an acrobat at around nine years old. He started off as an acrobat at that early of an age. I begged the ringmaster until he finally agreed to let me do it. Ever since then, I've been in incredible physical shape. That's also when I decided to form a group with my brother. We called ourselves the. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Not the fucking Dingleberry's joke. God damn it. I forgot about this. I, I had originally hoped to fucking circumnavigate this bit because it's so fucking bad. Do not look up Dingleberries. Don't fucking do it. You don't deserve it. You don't deserve to know the horror of that word. I've even heard of them in Germany. Liar. The point is that I wanted to be of some use to the circus. Hmm. You are truly a remarkable young man. The judge keeps looking at Acro almost like a proud father. Hmph. <laughs> Did you ever have any trouble with the ringmaster? The video is lagging rip. Hold on. I, I say hold on as if I have any idea what I can do to fix this. <laughs> it really is just hoping that it's not too bad of a storm outside. Why does it always rain around here? It's so... I guess we're next to the sea. It makes sense. Wait, hold on. Streamlabs is... 
It doesn't look like it's about to crash, thank goodness. God knows it's liable to do that whenever the hell it wants. Okay. We'll keep going. If the problem persists, be sure to sound off, chat. I I can only I can only imagine how it looks on your end. Ow! How could you ask such a thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have some sort of fundamental misunderstanding of this witness's testimony? Was the heartfelt emotions contained within? You better think about this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You better think hard. Ow! 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 Hmm. No matter how you look at it, there's no way I could ever see... I could see this witness ever taking the victim's life. Oh. Uh-oh. And see. <laughs> exactly. I've been waiting for you to say that, Your Honor. Nick, I hate to say it, but I agree with them. I was trying to chase down the truth, but I ended up just looking like a jerk. What do you think, Nick? I don't know. I think the more I cross examining I cross examine him, the worse I end up looking in the end. You mean I get the feeling that this cross examination is a trap. Yeah. Von Karma set you up again. Okay, let's press the first one and then see if that's what takes it what it takes. We Yes. My brother, Sean and I. What? You have a brother? How old were you when this happened, Acro? Don't change the subject, Von Karma. I was eight years old and my brother was four. Hmm. The parents were very cruel, weren't they? Nowadays, we aren't bitter about what happened to us. Because it allowed us to meet the wonderful people at the Berry Big Circus. Nick, the judge is getting misty-eyed. He's got a soft spot for sob stories, it looks like. Ow! <laughs> no crying in court. Let's keep going. <laughs> the witness may proceed with his testimony. Never mind. I think that will be enough for now. Pondering whether or not this man would kill the ringmaster leads me to believe that it is pretty unlikely. Exactly right, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, Your Honor. I would just like to know, can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want to ringmaster dead? Yeah, this is one of those fake-out moments the game likes to fucking do. Nick? Yeah, I didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Acro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? Phoenix right, stop talking and fucking riddles. That's because Acro had no reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolheartedly foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was, this is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yeah, that sounds about right. The end of things? Acro. You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not the Ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. What? Order! Order! Bailiff, I don't care who it is. Smack anyone who's loud in the face. Twice if you must. Bailiff, whack his PP. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? Ow! Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to his court? <laughs> Are you attempting to imply that Acro was trying to kill someone else? Yep. This is a decently clever twist, but still, fuck this case. Regina Berry. This young girl is a ringmaster's daughter, correct? Acro. You were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Oh, you look serious now. You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is you're wrong. That's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough! Mr. Wright, allow me to... Ow! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. <laughs> Jesus, Franny! You will stop me when I am cold and dead in the ground, Phoenix Wright! Huh? And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence! Now! 
I'd want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Berry. Yes, me too. I demand to see some proof. Here it is. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's... It's a piece of paper that was found inside the Ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. It's ironically entitled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. So you're saying that he called Russell Barry with that note? Yes, it's just one little problem. Problem? Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Barry. The freaking... The models of the people in the peanut gallery always kind of get me. <laughs> like, they're just so ridiculous. Order, order, order. Is that just how he laughed? <laughs> Wait a minute. Does he have a One Piece character laugh? Order, 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 order. <laughs> Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours. It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. Simply put, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why, the morning of the crime, she placed it on the cafeteria bulletin board. That's when her father, I mean, the ringmaster, saw the note. That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in that plaza instead of Regina. And then he was killed because of that mistake, instead of Regina. That's... that's... that's incredible! Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today. Lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way he could have exerted that kind of force on his lower body. If he were to do that, he'd end up falling out the window, and he wouldn't be able to see who was below. Acro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza, because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it! I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza! And that's when he let the bus fly. Hey, Nick! Isn't Regina listening to all of this from the audience? She is, unfortunately. It's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. I don't. She deserves to feel guilt for the shit she's done. Acro wrote this note to Regina. Objection! Foolishly foolish fool. With foolishly foolish fool ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Perhaps I should update my fucking vocabulary. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yes? What about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Berry, it would mean that this note is declaring that Regina Berry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? Don't fucking talk down to me, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The ringmaster knew what the note meant, which is why he went to the plaza in place of his lovely daughter. Who is only 16. We can't fucking forget this. Hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. I know all about it. Why would you say I have no idea? What the fuck? Why is that an option? What does that do for the case? I, I, I'm kind of curious. Nah, nah, fuck it. I, I don't trust this case. For all I know, I have to lose everything I have before I'm allowed to finish. An incident occurred six months ago, and now I am more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Mordhan! Wait, are, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case has its start in what happened six months ago. Really? Really, Nick? I, um, I think so. Not exactly brimming with confidence, are you, Phoenix? Well then, if that's the case, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know I'd certainly like to know what it is. If I can't answer that question, the judge is going to think I'm bluffing. Conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is actually... This. Hmm. Rachel! Rachu! 
That's how. What kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the size of evidence you asked for. One second, I need a drink. What do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away with him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence is what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Barry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account is the only logical conclusion you can draw. But... Foolish food who never tires of his own foolish ways. Franny, freaking look up a dictionary, a fucking like a list of synonyms, a thesaurus, like please, this is getting old fast. If you are so sure, Mr. Phoenix writes, then answers this question. I just it just occurred to me. Okay, good. It, it's gotta happen once a day, where I have a panic attack about whether or not I'm muted. Ugh. Who was Regina Berry's intended victim? Bat! Who is this? Se seriously, we we've never seen him before. Who the fuck is this guy? He looks a little bit like Acro. That is Acro's younger brother. Oh, that explains it! What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead! Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Acro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina? She did that to him? Do you spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool? I could ask you the same question, sister. Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into his current comatose state. A, a, a lion? Regina, I mean Miss Regina Berry, is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's just not in her. Hmm. So then what happened to Acro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the victim of an accident. I see. Now what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? It was more than that. God damn it. The lion biting bat was no accident at all. What? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There is no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being. But Regina is responsible for making the lion bite Acro's brother. Thanks to this stolen evidence, which probably shouldn't be allowed in court, but still. That's... that's just a scarf. Acro. The scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who was the one that gave this scarf to Bat? Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina? There's something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. <laughs> pepper and sugar and sugar and pepper and pepper and sugar. Regina gave this scarf to Bat right before the accident, and she covered it with as much pepper as she could. I am so fucking done with your shit, Mr. Phoenix, right? <laughs> uh... Hey, what's with the silent treatment? Don't worry, the bird seems interested. Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've done a good job of fingering a criminal. F horrible, horrible phrasing. Judge, especially with the fucking 16-year-old girl. For fuck's sake. But out of curiosity, what was her crime? Uh, try reckless endangerment. Miss Barry gave a pepper-covered scarf to Bat as a present. Where's the crime in that? It still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Mr. Phoenix Wright, wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling? 
right before Bat was bit by the lion. For a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling. However, lions sneeze. Leon wasn't trying to bite Bat at all. In reality, all he actually did was sneeze. This fucking girl. Fucking god damn it. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. What? You're a fool! Reckless endangerment. Manslaughter, if you will. You've got to be kidding me. And and she said nothing. Has she what? She didn't think to, like, warn him, or, like... He didn't notice the pepper that was specifically meant to make him sneeze the entire fucking time? God damn it. Everyone in this case is a fucking idiot, or a felon. Or both. Objection! I... What's the matter, Miss Long Karma? I, I, I'm desperately trying to think of something to object to, but fuck me. I, I, I object. I object for an objection's sake. Mr. Felix Wright, you, this theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident actually happened? Hey, hey, you're saying that in front of the guy whose brother just fucking died to it. Of course I do. It's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Acro nearly lost his brother due to this accent, or this joke, as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot! <laughs> it almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treats this accent with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Acro! You don't mean... You can't mean... Witness! Are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the lion... I see where you're going, but it's a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? The same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I drop Max's bust on top of the ringmaster, just gonna to totally step away from the whole motive question, because you, you totally got me there. I, I can't deny that. Where's the evidence that proves that claim? Ah. Uh, hold on, I'll tell you once this bird stops trying to poke at my brains. Hmm. You mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon. Was lack thereof to be more precise. A murder weapon. The bust that the defense claims was used. If that were to be found in Acro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. The bust. Nick, you've got to do something! It's the last step. If I get this one right, the case is won. Quest to search Acro's room. Yeah, we've got to. The defense requests to search the room to search the room of the witness, Ken Dingling. <laughs> what is it now? It looks like you still haven't figured things out, have you? By now you must know the meaning of Von Karma Total Justice. You mean? A Von Karma never leaves anything to chance. We already searched Acro's room yesterday. What did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Acro would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bust was not in the room. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright? The bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise. And we took Acro directly to the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. Just wait a second. Something's funny about all this. <laughs> it looks like you lack the final nail to put in my coffin. 
but, but, but what about the scarf? What about the note? What about the literal mountain of evidence proving that this motherfucker did it? That he agreed to, that he'd had to have done it? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here is that which pertains to the death of the Ringmaster. You should know that by now. Ugh. Do something, Nick! Don't let this case slip away! The bust! Where is it now? I, I think after we finish this case, I'm gonna end the stream. I don't know what's up with me. I, I feel exhausted. Where's the bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright! You know where that bust is! I'm sure you do! There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? Uh-oh. It seems that this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ah! I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Hold it! Now who's objecting? Maya! Where is Max's bust? The defense needs time to prepare to present its case. Lace, I mean case. Sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my, my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do you really have a case to present, Mr. Wright? What, are you asking me? The rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. Hey, wait, you can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Acro's lived his life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well, the defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope of logic, there's no room for a false step. Sink or swim, the only way through is forward. It's a murder weapon. Where's Max's bust now? It's not in the lodging house. Yep. You're gonna have to just guess this one. It's obvious. The bust is inside this very courtroom. It, it's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location of the bust once and for all. The witness stand. Acro. I'm sorry to ask this, but... Do you mind if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? I'm sorry. I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me it'd be really easy to say, hide a bust under there. <laughs> Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bust is under there. We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it place that you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? <sighs> well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. Uh-oh, Franny's pissed. You! You fool! How could you? Got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. Actually, two of them. Two of them. Miss Francisco von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch the surprise search in my room last night? There were two pieces of decisive evidence. The cloak and the bust. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Regina always took my trash out every morning, you know? But the bust, 
Obviously, I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of court, hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So you've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm. It all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Uh-huh. You definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me. Make a mistake. Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that. It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro. Yes, Your Honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the Barry Big Circus, Mr. Russell Barry? Yes, Your Honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro. All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day, my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times too. But I just couldn't forgive her. No matter what. What am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never, ever being able to understand her. Your brother became a star. Regina believes in that so purely that she would laugh innocently when saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when we decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. Are you saying that you are a victim in all of this as well? No. That's not what I mean. Oh. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. First I thought I'd kill myself. I pondered giving myself up. But I couldn't just up and leave. I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... I just couldn't up and leave yet. This has been such a strange case. It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. Completely fucking stupid. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again. I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Thank fucking God. Finally, it's over. This court is adjourned. December 30th, 4.27 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. F fabulous! But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Acro, the Ringmaster, Regina, and Bat- I I'm sorry if it's so low energy. I'm- I don't know what happened. I just hit the fucking floor. Ugh. Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question. One I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only at max. A million of them. <laughs> okay. That one... That one wasn't that bad. Thank you. What's the vibe in this room? Just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? <laughs> yep, fucking finally. She's been like this for a while now. Ah, uh, it's all my fault. Sweetie, sweetie. Max, you're still going to jail for this. You just got off for murder. Don't, don't think you've gotten away with it. Ben Acro. They're never coming back. 
But how everyone's gonna split up? Regina, Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? Acro said something right at the end. Just couldn't up and leave yet. Does that mean that Acro... Is he gonna try and get his revenge on me? No. I, I know the right answer for Actually, you know what? Sure. You fucking deserve it. Live in fear. I think that's his plan. But what can you do about it? You did do some awfully bad things to him, Regina. Well, anyways, good luck. Have a nice life. <laughs> You're right. He won't ever forgive me, will he? Yikes. Looks like I struck the final blow on Regina. Oh, promise? Poor Regina. Hey, Max! What is it, Mo? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? I'm sorry about what happened. Whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's going to happen to the circus now? Ah, oh, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone is sticking together. The staff, the performers... No one wants to leave the circus. That's why I've made a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as the new ringmaster. Well, I'll turn this circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. The best circus the world has ever seen? Don't laugh. That's quite the goal. Yay! I can't wait! And I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world's ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means this circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max! Let's work together and make our circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um, Regina, you're gonna help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? Why do you think that I brought you to court today? Uh, we've got to work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been. Mo. Mo's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the ver the very big circus without Regina Berry. Max. Nick. Seems like everything is going to turn out alright here. I can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. We'll save you the most fabulous seats. It'll take us a while to get ready. I'm going to order special whoopee cushion seats. <laughs> You're not funny, Mo. Ugh. This case has absolutely fucking decimated me. Thank God it's over. Hmm? I see. What made the case? Yesterday's surprise rate. It really paid off, just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? It was just a theory. If Acro really was a killer, I thought this was the only way it could ha it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. You mean Mr. Wright? Here we go. Of course. Well, Detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Acro's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the Chief Prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. There he is. Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. He's alive! Contrary to what everyone seems to think... Well, oh, he was reading an article about Francisca. Probably about her loss. <sighs> Alright, chat. Oh, my god. I don't know what's happening. I'm... I'm so tired. <laughs> uh, we're, we're gonna end it early today. I need something to eat. I need a nap. I need to turn on the fucking heat in this room, because, my God, it's freezing. But, with that, you all have a wonderful day. I I actually might have to cancel tomorrow's stream if this feeling, like, sticks around. I might be catching something. Ugh. You all take care, and I'll see you at the latest fr Friday, when we return to Octopath Traveler. But if I feel better, I will be doing a special stream tomorrow. Uh, a little test for some things in the future. Until then, you all take care. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye!